Okay, so let's start with GDP and let's start with the definition. So what is GDP? Now GDP obviously is gross domestic product, but what do we mean by this gross domestic product? So this basically is that GDP of a country is basically the value of all goods and services produced in a country in a year. Okay, so that sounds simple enough, but there are a few things that you should be cognizant of. So first of all is value. What do we mean by value? Uh, in the simplest term, without getting too technical, we're talking about monetary value. So however many goods and services you've produced, what is the money value of all of that? Second of all, when we talk about produced, what do we mean by that? This means that we're only looking at final goods or services. Uh, so something that's in the intermediate process does not count. Uh, we will go through an example of this soon. So if you don't understand that right now, don't worry too much. Uh, the other things is in a country and in a year. So look at all that, all the criteria that needs to be satisfied for something to be part of a country's GDP. First of all, it must have a monetary value. It must be a final good. It must have been produced within the borders of a country. And second of all, it must have been produced within the year that we're concerned with. Okay, so let's look at an example and that will clarify any confusions that you may have, all right? Okay, so suppose we're looking at the year 2019. Well, let's say we're looking at Bangladesh. And suppose Bangladesh only has two firms. So we're simplifying things considerably, doesn't really matter. So we have firm one and we have firm two. So obviously you would have heard this in equal 101 and equal 102 often is that we simplify things a lot to you know make things more tractable. But even if I was assuming there are a thousand firms in Bangladesh, a million firms in Bangladesh, the analysis would not change. It would just get a bit more complicated. So a two firm scenario is perfectly fine for what we're trying to do. Okay. So let's just focus on firm one for now. And what firm one does is that they produce steel. So during the year 2019, Farm One produced a certain amount of steel and they sold it for suppose 100 taka. That's the entirety of Farm One's production for the year that they were able to sell for 100 taka. To produce this, this steel, obviously, they had to hire some workers, and to these workers, they would have paid a wage. Suppose that wage is 80 taka. So you've produced a good. It doesn't have to be steel. It can be anything. Uh, to make this, you hire workers. You pay them 80 taka, and then you're able to sell it for 100. That means you have a profit of 20 taka. should be straightforward to everyone. Who did Farm 1 sell this to? Let's say they sold it to Farm 2. So let's look at Farm 2 now. What Farm 2 does is that they make cars. And to make cars, obviously, you need steel. So when Farm 1 stole steel for 100 taka, that's when Farm 2 
that was farm two buying. So for farm two, here's their cost, uh, raw material cost. Hundred. This is this. These two are the same thing. So farm two sold their steel. Uh, farm one sold their steel for a hundred taka. That was their profit, their revenue. And for farm two, that was cost. At the same time, farm two also had to hire workers. And suppose they paid their workers seventy taka. And also suppose that they were able to sell their car, the car that they made. Suppose they sold only one car. So the car that they made for 200 taka. Okay, so what does that mean? You've made a thing, a car in this example, but it can be anything. And to make this, you've had to spend 100 taka in raw material, 70 taka behind wages, and you've sold it for 200. So 200 minus 100 minus 70 gives you a 30 taka in profit. And that's it. In our simplified equation for Bangladesh in 2019, there are only farm one and farm two. Farm one has made steel, they've sold it to farm two and made a profit of 20. Farm two had bought the steel. Let me just write steel here. Farm two had bought the steel for 100 taka. They've made a car with it. They've sold a car for 200 and made a profit for 30. Okay. So far, it should be quite simple for everyone. Now, let's try and calculate the GDP. Okay. So we're trying to calculate GDP in 2019 for Bangladesh. Okay, how much will that be? Uh, so basically there are three separate ways of calculating GDP. So let's go one by one. So the first method would be to calculate the value of all the final goods that were produced in the country in the year. So final goods. How do we do that? So let's think about what was produced in the country. Now, farm one produced steel. But the question is, is steel a final good? Do we sell steel to its consumers? No, we don't. We sell steel to farms that want to use steel to make something else. So steel is a intermediate good. It's not a final good. So farm one did not make any final good. Farm two made cars. Are cars final good? So the question once again that we need to ask is do we sell cars to the final consumers who wants to use these cars or do we sell cars to some other firm that use cars to make something else? And the answer is that we sell cars to the final consumers. So cars are final good. So in 2019, Farm 2 had made one car. They had sold that car for 200 taka. So using the final good method, we see that GDP is 200 taka because this is the only final good that we had made this year. I mean, usually, you know, there will be hundreds and thousands of goods and we add them all up, but only for the final goods. We ignore the intermediate goods. That's, that's the first way of doing it. The second method is to look at the value addition. So let's go back to farm one again now. They made steel. Now, there is obviously a technical process in which steel is made from ores and whatnot. We don't really need to get into it. But what we know is that 
there was no value. Before you started producing anything, there is no value to the raw materials, let's say. Farm one took ores, let's say, from the ground, and they were able to make something that was worth 100 taka. So what Farm One did is that they contributed to the economy by value addition of 100. There was no value, and then Farm One created value worth 100. What did Farm Two do? They were able to sell the car for 200, but did they create value worth 200? They did not. The steel that they had bought from farm one was already worth 100 taka. What farm two did was take that steel worth 100 taka and convert it into something that's worth 200. So what farm two did is contributed to the economy via value addition of 200 minus 100, which is 100. So using the value addition method, GDP is 100 taka contributed by farm one plus 100 taka contributed by farm two, that comes to 200 taka. That's the second method. And now finally, the third method is the income method. Income or the earnings method or the revenue method. There are different names to it. For income, what we do here is we basically look at how much money the people in the economy are making. So, so let's go back to farm one again. And let's try to identify who is making how much. To do that, first we need to identify how many economic agents we have. We have the owner of farm one and we have the workers. I mean, if we go complicate things, there will be government, there will usually be different types of different levels of owners and workers and whatnot. But in this simplified example, this is all we have. And how much money did each of these people or group of people make? The owners made a profit of 20. So the owners earned 20 taka. How much did the workers earn? The workers received a wage of 80. These are the two incomes we have in farm one. Okay. Let's come to farm two. We have the same scenario here. We have the owners and we have the workers. How much did the owners make? They made a profit of 30 taka. How much did the workers make? They make, made uh, they earned a wage of 70 taka. Okay. So basically, in Bangladesh, in 2019, in our simplified example, there are two firms. In these two firms, we have two groups of owners and two groups of workers, and they've both, well, they, all four of them have earned certain amounts of money. So if we add up their income, we will get GDP, which is 20 taka plus 80 taka plus 30 taka plus 70 taka. And if you do the calculations, what you see is that the total GDP in the country is 200. So notice that all three methods give the same value and they must give the same value because GDP we're using different methodology, but we're trying to calculate the same thing. So if you're doing your calculations correctly, if you're using your reason correctly, you should always get the same value when we use these three methods. So let's summarize very quickly. GDP is the value, usually we mean the money value, the value of all goods and services of all final goods and services produced in a country in a year. It's, we looked at 
example of form one, form two, let's go back to these things. First of all, value. We are only concerned with the monetary value of how much cost of the final goods is, how much money the owners are making, how much money the workers are making. That's all that we're concerned with, monetary value. When we're calculating GDP, we're not really concerned with the welfare or equity or nothing like that. There are other times when we will be focused with that. So that's for value. Next comes produced. So final goods. If we have any intermediate goods, uh, so still, let me actually write this down. This is, oops, sorry. So this is an intermediate good. Calculations, uh, when we're calculating GDP, we do not consider intermediate goods, but when we have a final good, such as a car, this is a final good. This is part of our calculation. Okay, so value of all goods and services produced in a country. So notice that this production took place in, place in Bangladesh. We're not concerned with India, or Pakistan, or US, or nothing like that. Uh, one thing you must, in that case, remember is that if we have foreign firms operating within the borders of Bangladesh, that is part of Bangladesh's GDP. But we have, if we have domestic firms that are operating outside of Bangladesh, that is no longer part of Bangladesh's GDP. You all must have gone through the syndicate one or two, and of course, in a year. So GDP in a year. It doesn't always have to be a year. It can be GDP, GDP for a three month period, GDP for one month, GDP over a 10 year period. It really depends on what type of analysis you're trying to do. And finally, we looked at three separate ways of calculating the GDP of a country. I'm not sure if all of you had seen all these three methods in one or two, if you have done one or two with me, you probably have not. I don't think I, I usually go through all three methods. You're probably familiar with just number one. But number two and three, as you've seen already, is quite straightforward and it's not difficult to calculate. 